are you doing? Hmm. Not feeling any better. I'm so sorry. Scale of one to ten. Ten being you're doing well, and one being you wanna die. Oh. Oh, honey. That's not good. That's not good. I can't leave you like this, okay? This isn't where your story ends. This isn't where it all ends. You're really strong. Do you know that? Do you know how strong you are? You are strong. Hmm, you are. Just think about it this way. Think about all the crap that you've gone through. All the stuff you're still dealing with. And the fact that, that you're still here, you're still standing. Well, technically right now you're s sitting up in bed, but you're standing, you're alive. You're here. If you were to, like, <laughs> convert all the stuff that happened into actual weight, you'd be carrying, like, a hundred tons. And you're still here. I'd say that's pretty strong, right? There's a lot of people who don't go through that much. And they can be strong too. But here, we're talking about you. And you are strong. You can get through anything. You have survived 100% of your bad days. Every moment you thought you could never get through, that you panicked and thought that was it, you got through it. And, and you survived and had happy days. You've gone on. You made it. You know? You know, like... <laughs> you can get through anything. You're badass. Do you want to know a secret? <laughs> it's not a secret, of course I love you. We've known each other for ages, why wouldn't I love you? You're wonderful. But... <laughs> my secret... is actually thing that I used to help me back when I was really depressed. Something that helped me get through it. And every now and then I still need to use it, but it's always a good skill. And the idea is that you imagine your depression as a separate entity from yourself. A separate voice, a separate presence. You know, it's like a little goblet on your shoulder. And it whispers things to you to make you feel worse. Because it feeds off of that depression. It wants you to feel bad. It wants you to die. And that's how it wins. You know, it's this separate thing. Your goblin is too creepy. You can get it as a weird imperfect pixie or something. But, you know, when you think things like, mm, I want to die. I want to feel worse. I want to feel so bad until I don't have anything else and I can finally die. Or, I just want to lie down in my room in the dark and just think about things that upset me. And it's kind of weird that we listen to it, but if you think about it, when we feel out of control, when we feel like we don't know how to be happy, but we know how to be sad. We do know how to be sad, we're experts at being sad. You and I, we've graduated with masters over how to make our own selves sad. Because if we don't know how to make ourselves happy, if we can't control that and we're going to feel like crap anyway, if we're doing it to ourselves, then maybe we're still in control. Maybe we still have a hold on something, we know how to make ourselves sad. We can do that. It's familiar. It's what we know. But you know, it's like, if you were to go by the logic that those are separate from yourself, your depression is separate from you. And you think about what you want, what you really want. I would imagine that you don't really want to die or to feel worse. It's like, if you think about how bad you already feel, why in the world would you really truly want to feel worse? You wouldn't. 
nobody would. I mean, I think that if you really let yourself think about it for a few moments, you'd realize that you want what other people want. You want to feel safe and happy and loved and to love others, you know? I feel like that's what we want. We don't want to feel worse. It's depression that wants to feel worse. See, the thing is, the depression's voice sounds a lot like our voice. It's almost identical, and so it tricks us into thinking that it's our voice. And when you're telling yourself, I'm useless, I don't deserve anything good, I'm not allowed to be happy, I'm only allowed good things so they're taken away, you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm just hurting others by existing, stuff like that. Those are, it's hard to fight those thoughts when they're coming from ourselves because it's like, you can't tell yourself to, to fuck off, you know what I'm saying? You can't be like, self, you're wrong because you are yourself and so it's very difficult. It's, it's interesting because we can set up so many barriers in our own heads based on what we tell ourselves. If we tell ourselves over and over again that, you know, that we can't do it, it's not going to get better, it's never going to get better, we'll never get what we want, it really, really starts to stick and it sets up barriers, you know, it's like, I always say, and I do actually always say this, but it's that the only 100% guaranteed way that things will not get better is if you don't let them happen, if you decide and you give up, if you really give up. Or if you just refuse to even let the idea really exist. And it can be hard to let those exist. Because if you let yourself feel, if you open yourself up to the idea that could get better, it's so vulnerable. And sometimes we're not ready. If something else happens, it can really hit us in the gut and it's scary, but... Oh my gosh, we have to do it. We have to. That's the way out. Believing in something. So, the thing about, you know, the depression's voice, the depression wants you to feel worse, the depression wants you to think that it'll never get better, the depression is the one who wants you to die, the depression is the one that wants you to be upset, that wants you to just hide away, never talk, don't eat, don't sleep, or always sleep, or eat everything. It's a voice that says, mm -hmm. That friend hates me. I should just stop bothering them. I should stop talking to them. They don't like me anyway. I can tell they don't like me. I mean, I thought things were okay. Maybe they're not okay. So depression telling you that. And so when it's a separate voice, a separate entity, it's a lot easier to combat because it's something else. You can understand it's motives and what it's trying to do to you, and it's a lot easier to fight something that's not yourself, because if you punch yourself in the face, you still have a black eye. But when it's something separate, you realize kind of what you have to do. So Mr. Depression Voice can be like, Becca, things are difficult right now. In fact, things will always be difficult. You will never be happy and nothing will ever go right. And I could be like, all right, Bob, I see what you're saying. I hear you. I really do. But I just want to ask you, do you have a source on this? Or is there like a peer reviewed journal that you could reference? Because I'm kind of thinking that your logic here is a little shaky. Do you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, Bob. Go back to your apartment. I did not invite you over. I don't know why you're in my house right now. I'm trying to watch Hannibal right now. So... <laughs> I think that it works better when you give them silly names. You know, it could be like Howard. Stop it. For the last time, I have a solution to this. I have like three backup plans. I can handle this. And it's like, everything is going to go wrong. 
none of your plans are gonna go right, your friends hate you, that one doesn't like you, and you'll never be truly loved, and I'm like, Howard, it's two in the fucking morning, go to your own apartment, I don't want to talk about this right now, I think I'm gonna be fine, N Howard, no, <laughs> that's what I like to think of it as, weird tenants in your apartment building who keep walking into your bedroom at two in the morning and being like, did you know that everything is terrible? <laughs> I got you smiling. I win. <laughs> but, uh, no. You can do this. You know, there are some nights where we think no point in doing anything because I'll still be depressed and my problems will still exist but this, one, of the, one of the best coping skills that I've had is that even if you can't fix the problem right now even if tomorrow you'll still wake up in the house that you live in you can make right now better as best as you can so you can be like hmm, I could watch a movie mm, I'll still be depressed, what's the point? think about it what sounds better? Being depressed while watching a movie, or being depressed while lying in your bed doing nothing but feeling sad? I'm gonna go with door number one. I think that sounds like... I think we can all agree that it sounds like the better option. So, you know, I like to I do another one where you do something for the all, all five senses. So you start with touch, wear comfy clothes. Are you cold? You can put some fuzzy socks on. Are you too hot? You know, wear a t-shirt or something. Or not. I don't know. It's your choice. <laughs> um, you know, if you're feeling kind of overheated, it's better to cool off. Um, the way that I find it is if I'm angry, it's better to cool off. If I'm depressed, it's better to warm up. Are you sitting in the room with the lights off? You should probably not do that. It's probably best to have the lights on. You know, are you purposely listening to songs that make you cry? Don't do that. Are you purposely looking at someone's Facebook profile that's gonna make you cry? Don't do that. <laughs> are you looking through text messages that you wish you could have sent or didn't send or did send or whatever? Don't do that. <laughs> um, so, to the five senses, touch, get comfy, um, smell, you can, there's multiple ways you can do this, you can get a candle or some incense, you can just hang a car freshener on your nose somehow, it might help, it sounds like it might help, I haven't tested that one, but hey, science advances all the time, <laughs> you can, also a combination of smell and touches, you could clean yourself off, take a shower, Feel clean, smell good. It could help. If you haven't taken a shower in a few days, especially because you're depressed, I'm telling you, it feels good if you shower in the morning and change your clothes. So even just that can make things feel a little better. Taste. You can eat something nice, have a little snack. If you haven't eaten today, you should eat today. Um, or you can have something nice to drink. You can have some water to hydrate yourself. Or uh, juice something that'll make you feel better. Not alcohol. Alcohol is a depressant and it's gonna make you feel worse. It is literally going to depress you more. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, sense of hearing. You can listen to peaceful music or music that makes me, makes you happy. I like listening to more upbeat songs that I know all the words to because then my brain kind of latches onto the song because I know the words. Mm. You can also listen to ASMR if that helps. Um, sense of sight. You could uh, watch a good movie. You could look at pretty pictures. You could, you know, make the lighting comfortable in your room. Things like that. What else? Sight. Sound. I think that's everything. And yeah. You're gonna be okay. Everything is gonna work out. 
And you know, I noticed that a lot of times things seem a lot worse at night. Something about it being dark and quiet and, you know, we're kind of tired so maybe we're a little more emotionally vulnerable than usually the people are a little kind of in their own rooms. Something about that makes everything seem very weighed down, very difficult. So if it's like midnight or later where you are and you've been crying, um, you know, maybe you should try and get some sleep. You might feel better in the morning at least a little bit refreshed. Take a shower, get dressed, drink some water. Did you remember to take your meds today? If so, you need, you know, if you forgot, depending on what your doctor says, whether you're supposed to just wait for the next dose, or if you're supposed to take it when you remember, do what your doctor says. But yeah, for me, if I forget, I just take them when I remember. I don't usually forget them. I don't know. Did me talking at you make you feel any better? A little? Okay. Well, I'm glad I helped a little. Do you wanna watch a movie? I can make popcorn. Get you a glass of water. Okay. I'd like that. Maybe you'll feel even better after, yeah?